That verse can be found in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 12th verse, and it reads as follows. For now we see through a glass darkly. We're seeing through a glass darkly. In other words, you cannot see the realm of the Spirit right now. You're looking through a dark glass trying to figure out what it contains, what's in it. What's on the opposite side that's influencing and impacting and guiding my life that I cannot see. But yet, I'm still yet trusting in him. But it goes on to say, But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am fully known. In other words, you will ultimately know God and you will know him in the fullness of who he is. But yet it's going to take some time for us to get there. But prayer helps us to progress towards the knowledge of God and knowing him, knowing him far more quickly and knowing him a whole lot better. The more time you spend in God's word, listen, and the more time you spend in prayer and prayerfulness, Every situation that you go through in life is designed to make you more knowledgeable of God. It's not designed to defeat you. It's not designed to destroy you. Yes, the devil may have brought it, but God intended it for your good and not evil. And when you go through things and you tested and you tried prayer, and you availed yourself to wait upon the Lord, and wait to hear his answer or see how he would answer or how he would work various situations out. And then you could see the power of God being realized in your life. You can see the power of God causing you to come into a greater place, a greater level of maturity in him. When you give your children a lesson, when schools give them a lesson, it's causing them to be matured. It's causing them to grow up. It's causing their minds to think. When God puts you into a test, He wants you to think. He wants you to think about the ins and outs. He wants you to become so knowledgeable of the situation that you're in. By research, even if you don't understand, okay, why am I going through this? Explore yourself. I told you that before. Become knowledgeable of yourself, your way of thinking, your way of handling things, how you react in stressful situations, how it impacts you mentally, emotionally, physically, how it zaps you of your energy or increases your energy, how it causes you to either pray or not pray, whether it causes you to have a conniption or not, or whether you can bounce back and have joy in the midst of trying situations. Whether it causes your trust and your dependency in God to increase. Because all those things are important. Even when you go into prayer, God doesn't want you to come into prayer unknowledgeable what's going on. And even though you may not have all the finer points and all the detail, but yet you are approaching him knowledgeably because of the fact that you're presenting your prayer in such a way. He knows what areas that really needs to be addressed and he's understanding that you realize what things need to be addressed. And those things that you don't know, you can ask him to expose them to you and reveal them to you. You've heard me say sometimes ago, some time ago, God used to put me on fast. Not that I would go on there purposefully, although that was my desire. But there were in times of extreme duress that God put me on fast, and even sometimes I didn't know what was going on, but he still put me on a fast, and I prayed and I sought him until God himself listened to me, reveal fine details of situations, things that I would not have known unless the Spirit of God reveals it unto you. Now there is a story in the book of Acts believe it's the fourth chapter in the 13th verse where we could see this actually being played out and it says now they, that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus and the thing is you may not have an education you may not even be college material bound or ready or that may not be your lot in life but regardless of whether you're not learned in the things of the world or book knowledge, you still can be a power source. 
Because here Peter and John, Peter was a fisherman. He didn't have an advanced education, but he was yet a businessman. But yet by the way he talked and conducted himself and, and, and addressed him, or dressed himself, he and Peter, most of them perceived that these were unlearned and ignorant men. But yet they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus because their communication, their actions, their style, their way of delivery, the, the signs and wonders that came as a result of them actually caused them to be recognized as knowledgeable men when it comes to God. Now listen, as a result of this, Peter and John was led or followed by a girl with a familiar spirit. And for days she shouted that these are the men of God that come to show us away, but it was by a demonic spirit. They turned and cast the spirit out of her by the spirit of Jesus Christ and the authority of Jesus Christ. And as a result, they ended up incarcerated and in prison. But the Bible said that they began to sing songs unto the Lord, and at midnight the prison was shaken, and they were led out by an angel because of their devotion and knowledge and understanding of who their God was. When you know your God, they that know their God shall do great exploit because you have taken the time to understand him and get to know him that your knowledge becomes a source of power. Someone stated that knowledge is power. In the world, it's power to influence events and times and business deals and even the vast number of people and the masses of people. But in the world of the spirit, your knowledge equates to you having influence over not only this world, but over the kingdom of darkness. That even the atmosphere has to obey your commands. The elements have to obey when you're speaking by the knowledge and the understanding and the directive of God. Healings have to come forth when you speak about the knowledge of God. When God gives you knowledge, this isn't always a favorable outcome, but you will, you'll be able to speak the mind and the will of God. Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they spoke the mind of God. Elijah and Elijah spoke the mind of God. Nathan the prophet spoke the mind of God. Samuel spoke the mind of God. Jesus spoke the mind of his father, and he said always that I and the Father are one, but Jesus had a direct connect between he and the Father that we ourselves can have as well. Because he lets us know that that was not just an exclusive thing to himself, but because he came to fulfill the will of the Father. Yes, he is close to the Father because he is the only begotten Son of the Father. But also, God now calls us sons when we become saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. And now, as a result of being a son, we become close to him. And as a result of being close to him, he shares his mystery and makes us knowledgeable. That when we speak out of our mouths, we're revealing things that were hidden. That's why you could walk into a boardroom and, and, and talk when you're led by God. And give directions and directives and sell and see that people are about to make a mistake that this is not going to be the outcome. You can see future events and know what's going on people in people's lives. And God can reveal to you the ramifications of various decisions. And you could speak up in wisdom and knowledge and understanding with the insight of God and be able to speak and say that's not a wise decision this time. This is not the way to progress. This is the course of action that we should take. And when God does so, and you speak what God is saying, God brings you, brings you into a place of favor and prestige. And if you look at Joseph, Joseph ultimately became second to Pharaoh, the kingdom of Egypt. If you look at Daniel and the Hebrew boys, Daniel was elevated to a great position. In King Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian Empire, as a result of him becoming knowledgeable and staying before God, he didn't move or answer anybody until he sought the face of God and God revealed to him explicit details, gave instructions and directions, which Nebuchadnezzar saw the faithfulness of the Hebrew boys, even 
when he erected a statue of his offered image and had them bow down at the sound of those that served him. If they fell, they were cast into the fiery furnace. And the Hebrew boys failed to do so and were cast in. But because of their knowledge of what God could do, but they said, oh, king, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we know that he can. And the thing is, you've got to take that type of stance in your faith walk and your knowledge level. Don't be ignorant of what God can do and what he cannot do. But be knowledgeable by educating yourself through his word, taking it into your spirit, man, to your heart, your soul. Let me tell you, God revealing himself is not exclusive to just those that have a pulpit ministry, a prophetic calling, a teaching gift, pastors, preachers, apostles, bishops, elders, ministers, reverends. Whomever calls themselves a man or woman of God. God is just not in the business of exclusively revealing himself. Many years ago, when I was in the military, I was in the reserves, and on Sundays I miss Sunday morning church service. But I would always steal away at some point during the day to pray and read my Bible. And God would reveal to me exactly what had been preached during the morning message at the church that I was a member of. And as soon as I would get out of church, or as soon as my reserve duty was over, I would call a friend of mine. And, and I would share with him, before he had a chance to share with me the morning message, I would share with him what God had revealed to me in my one-on-one -on -one time with him during my reserve time. And he said, William, it was just as if you were here in service this morning. That's exactly what Bishop talked about. And the thing is this, friends. God did that consistently with me. He can do the same with you. Even sometimes I, I don't watch preachers on televisions that, that often because I want to be able to stay the, before God and hear what he's saying. But there was one prominent preacher after me preaching on Sunday, I was led to turn it on and listen. And the exact same things that I was saying in the message on Sunday, he was saying then. My point is this. God is a God of one voice. Whatever God speaks to one, he speaks to others. And that voice is very consistent to who he is and his character and his nature. But when you learn God, you learn the oneness in his voice. That whatever he's speaking to you, he's speaking to the body of Christ at large. There should not be one person that's missing the beat or the cadence of our drum major. There's not one person that should not be in step with God is calling for, even in the times in which we're living in. God is calling the church to repentance. He is calling the church to forsake its lovers. He's calling the church to be knowledgeable what it has become ensnared in and entangled in. And to free itself in him by his spirit and by his words. We're living in a time where Christianity is extremely popular. But I've been saying for years, and you've heard me say it before, and there was a pastor that I used to serve under who on a social media site posted something last evening, which I saw it this morning and responded to it. And I've been saying it for years, and I have been scorned for it, but that the church will not return till its full glory and its full power and its ability until we as a body of Christ believers are persecuted for our faith and what we believe in. And therein lies the power of God because those that were persecuted, prayed, sought the face of the Lord, they fasted, 